And none of us would have made it without God. Amen. Amen. He looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. Right. That way we say thank God for his precious blood. Amen. Thank God for the power of God that lives inside. That's right. Amen. I don't just thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God because he lives inside of me. That's right. Amen. How about that? Is that all right? Amen. 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 I, don't, I don't just testify thank God for the Holy Ghost, but, but he lives inside. Amen. Thank God that baptism that worked for me took me down in his name and buried me. Amen. To wash away my sins. Amen. He washed them away. I didn't, I couldn't have never washed them away. He did it for me. And I love him because he is so good. Amen. I love him because he's a good God and he's worthy to be praised. I certainly want you to grab your Bibles. Amen. Grab your Bibles there in Deuteronomy. Yeah. Amen. Seven, seven chapter and the ninth verse. We're going to sing a little bit and then we're going to get in the word of God. Is that all right? Amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. I know God is a good God, yeah. I know God is a good God. You know he woke me up this morning and yes, he oh, started me on my way. Yeah. I know God is a good God, yeah. I know God is a good God.
today and we're so very thankful God has given us a word for his people mm -hmm. and while you're resting on your feet we read this verse because I certainly want to encourage you in the Lord amen today there in Deuteronomy in the seventh chapter verse number nine say know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God yes. the faithful God which keep his covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Well, I want to talk to you today, if you let me, about remaining faithful to God. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to talk to you. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you today and we thank you for your word. Asaph said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You have been so faithful to us. Lord, teach us to be faithful to you. Lord, let your word get down in our soul. Oh, God, let the seed of your word get down in us, Lord, so we can grow there by your word. And we're going to love you. We're certainly going to praise you in Jesus' name. And let everyone that agrees say amen. amen. Jesus never fails Jesus never fails why cause heaven it's an old song and earth shall pass away but Jesus oh Lord never Never fail. I tried him and he never failed. Have you tried him? I tried him and he never, never failed. Come on, y'all. Oh, heaven and earth shall pass. One more time, Jesus, come on, never Love him today. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. We give God the praise. Thank you all so much. Yes, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful to his promises. God keeps his promises. We're in this time now where many people are doing whatever they want to do. All right. But God is faithful to his promises. And he never fails. Paul wrote to the saints and fellow brethren of Christ, which are at Colossae. He said, grace be to you and peace. Yeah. For our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was greeting the saints, oh, yeah. their and faithful brethren. 
That's what I love about the Lord. God knows he has some faithful saints. Yes, he do. And he needs some in this day in which we live. Right, right. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going. Uh -huh. You got to live this life. Yes, Little son, they say singing and shouting is all right. But you got to live this life. The faithful of God are noticed. That's right. People notice the faithful of God. You don't have to put a sign on your car saying I'm faithful. They will watch your works. People know when you're saved and when you're not. Sometimes not saying a word. They'll feel the fragrance of God. If you're faithful, it'll pay off after a while. The song says, sir, the Lord will pay off. After a while, whatever is right, just do that. All right. God notices our faithfulness. Yeah. And it's a good thing to have God paying attention to you. Amen. I remember neighbor when we talked about Abraham in Romans, the fourth chapter, verse number 20, said he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Mm -hmm. Abraham kept his faith in God. Now you can take Abraham's name off of that and put your name there and say, I kept my faith in God. Don't tell me that you hadn't been through stuff. There have been some stuff that like to shook us a loose. Oh, there have been some times the doctor said, you got this and you have it for the rest of your life. Remember when the doctors were saying stuff about my brother, this would be his life for the rest of his life. But I'm looking at God work a miracle in him every time I see him. I don't know about y'all, but some people need them to drop a big elephant out the sky. I don't need all that. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Knowing that God is able and that he is a winner. Y'all going to help me? Where? At the finishing line. God ain't through blessing you yet. He ain't through blessing all of us yet. And when God gets through with us, you ought to square your shoulders and say, I shall come forth as what? Pure gold. This is a walk of faith. We don't, we don't walk by sight. Some things God ain't going to show us right now. That's why the Bible says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. But the thing I love about God, he said, I am the evidence. That means we have evidence showing of the things that are not seen. My God, if you see a brick, you can look at a house. If you see yourself healing, you can see yourself walking and talking again. If you're yet breathing, God is alive in you. You won't always feel your best. But know that there's another day coming. Every morning the Lord said you get new mercies. You need to check in your account and see what you got there. Because if you don't know what they are, God will show his mercy. If you can see, that's mercy. If you can talk, that's mercy. If you can stand in your right mind, mercy. If you know your name, mercy. If you can talk about it, mercy. If you can think about it, it's mercy. Every morning. God has given you mercy. And God is faithful. I don't care if folk acknowledge God or not, he's yet faithful. Yes, he is. I wonder that Paul wanted the saints to know that grace would be added unto them. Yes. We talked about grace this morning, the deacon did, in Sunday school, God's unmerited favor. Uh -huh. When you are faithful to God, God gives you favor. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. Some stuff you know you didn't deserve. <laughs> So we, I put my name in there too. We didn't deserve it. But because we are faithful to God, there comes the blessings of God. When you are faithful to God, there is the healing of God. And I ain't talking about almighty. I'm talking about the almighty God. Somebody may say mighty God. I call him the almighty. He's on the main line. You call him up. Tell him what you want. When you are faithful to God, many blessings flow. And I listen how the Lord said, if you pay your tithes and offering, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven. Y'all can put your names on it if you want them, but I put some other stuff on the windows. The Bible didn't give us the name of the windows, but I just added some names myself. There's a window of our blessings where we get healed all the time. 
The doctors can't heal us, but God can open the window of heaven and pour us out of healing that we won't have room to receive. There's a window of peace that when we're complex in our mind and don't know what to do, don't know where to turn, God will give us a peace that surpasses man understanding. Oh, there's another window of love. When our enemies cut up, I mean they know how. But God will give us his love that will separate us, and we will love our enemies. Sometimes we love them, folks don't even understand why we love them so much. Some of them, they ain't no good to us, but we just love them anyway. And then there's joy. Oh, when everybody else said, you got joy. Then you forgot about the alarm system. God got a window of protection. Heads all around you. Why you are not paying attention, God is watching over. When you do what God say in favor, God rewards you. He said, I will pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive for the rest of your life. And I like to have this first verse we read in Deuteronomy. It says, those that keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Lord, have mercy. That means we got to do what God said while we live. And those before us did what he said do while they were living. And don't you know, I remember David said, I was young and now I'm old yet. Have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed or his seed? Your great grandmama see uh -huh. came down to your grandmama. Y'all gonna talk to me? All right. Your grandmama came down to your mama and look at you. Look, you done got here now. Uh -huh. And God gonna bless. If we obey God and be faithful to God, God will bless us. Yes, he will. Well, my children ain't saved. That ain't got nothing to do with what God said. He will yet bless your children. And don't you want them to bless your family? Right, right. Lord, y'all hug your little grandbabies almost to death. They be telling grandma, you just let me go. But you're so happy that God keeping them alive. Some of them get beside themselves, but you love them just the same. There was Lister when Paul and Silas came to her. She, 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 she said, it, and I liked her, her word. She said, and she said she was baptized, her in the household, and she besought us. Paul is writing, talking, saying that if you have judged me to be faithful unto the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. See, everybody uh, ain't faithful. And everybody can't have God's servants in their house. Some of us got too much stuff in our house that don't remind us of no one else of God. But when you are faithful with God, you can invite his servants. Do y'all know what happens when you invite the, the man or woman of God in your home? My God, you got the blessings of God. Did you not remember Obed Eden when the Ark of the Covenant was set in his house for those months that blessings flowed in his family? Were unflowing. God bless you when you do right. But when you got the word alive in your house, can't nothing happen but blessings flow. Because you are faithful in the word every day. You are living by the word every day. You're walking in the statue of God every day. You can't help but be blessed. She recognized Paul and Silas were men of God. She wanted them to come and stay with her. Can't you imagine her fixing food for the servant of God? You know when you give a servant a cool glass of water, you just like blessing God. These who are blessing God, don't you let no one stop you. I don't care who you are. Don't you let no one stop you from doing what you know to do in God. Don't let nobody slow you down. Folk, folk I wouldn't do all that. You better watch your mouth. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking about the one talking to you. You watch your mouth. Not to join in with the unfaithful. Amen. Amen. Don't let the words come out of your mouth that don't sound like God. Amen. When you do what you do as unto the Lord, the Lord going to bless you. He going to pour rain with blessings on you. Some of us are yet living today because we were obedient to God years ago. Some of the things we did back then has caused us to yet be alive today. And you ought to continue. Don't stop. Continue being faithful to God. I remember ASAP. ASAP said, but it is good for me to draw near to God. ASAP in Psalm 73 and verse 28. It says, I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And when we are faithful to God, we ought to draw closer to God. When we are faithful to God, we ought to trust more in God. Uh -huh. When you draw close to God, there's a difference in your relationship. 
The closer you get to God, the more you think like God. The closer you get to God, the more you feel like God. The closer you get to God, the more you love like God. The closer you get to God, the more you are like God. You take on his fragrance. He's a sweet-smelling Savior. My God, you begin to act like God would have you to act. You act like you're a child of God. Why? Because you're faithful to him. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And others, they ain't going to follow. When people see you walking with God, you ain't got to open your mouth. They can feel the fragrance of God. They know that you're a child of God. You don't have to make an announcement. We already know. We can feel the presence of God in your life. Hallelujah. And then there are some folk, they can talk and speak in tongues. You just look at them like, what's that? Okay. <laughs> they ain't faithful to God. You Don't y'all know you can feel air when it's in a building? Right. In the wintertime, you can feel when your heat is on. People can feel the fragrance of God in your life. I don't care how much you talk or don't talk. We can feel the Holy Ghost if you have the Holy Ghost. We're not here to judge you. We just feel what we feel. Are y'all all right? It is better, the Bible says, to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. This is the middle verse of the whole Bible, Psalms 118 and 8. It's the, it's the verse that divides the whole Bible. And in that verse, here's the psalm saying, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Why? Because we're supposed to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to what our own understanding, but in all our ways. We ought to acknowledge God and he shall direct our path. God don't want us trusting man because man will let you down. A lot of folk have walked away from God listening to what man say. Some have put their whole trust in man. And when man fell, we are all vulnerable. We are just flesh. We will make mistakes. But you ought to put your trust in the Lord. A lot of folks want, I'm not getting married no more because the last time I got married, he cheated. And his name was John. And every John you hear, you get mad at him. Wow. Sally stole your husband, and, and he wasn't no good to start off with. Because he wouldn't have went with Sally, but you blame every Sally you run across. Oh, wow. Well, what's your name, Sally? Oh, hey. Well, don't be mad at Sally because that's her name. Yeah. You look at God. God brought you through whatever you got through. Yes. Don't complain about my back hurt all the time. God spared you from an accident that you should have been dead in. But God let you live. Don't talk about I had a stroke, I can't walk fast. But God kept you alive in the stroke. Where, where you should have died, God let you live. Oh, I had a heart attack and now I can't take much. But God spared your life. You didn't have a master, but God kept you alive. God is faithful. God is faithful. And he's a loving God. You make too many excuses about what God is doing and what he ain't doing. And that's why I say for Hebrews 6, 11 and 6, listen to what it said, but without faith, it's just impossible to please God. That them that come to God must believe that he is. Uh -huh. First, we got to believe that God is God. And that he is a reward. Of them that diligently see. You got to press your way to God. Oh, I look at folk when they're trying to receive the Holy Ghost. Sometimes the folk tap with them. work harder than they work. We out there, come on, call him for yourself. Reach out and trust the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. They just, they wear you out. <laughs> But when you get ready for the Holy Ghost, yes. you won't need nobody to really help you. Because he that hung and thirsts after righteousness, they shall be filled. You ain't got to have nobody rubbing all of you. Come on, baby. Come on through. You ain't got to trust nobody for them. You can't give nobody the Holy Ghost no way. When I'm rubbing this anointing, you ain't got no anointing. It's God. How God anointed Jesus with power and with the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good. You can't anoint nobody. God does the anointing. We can't even bless nobody. God blesses. We use we are the instruments He used to do His blessing. Well, I blessed her with a house with who money? Well, I had money in my bank. And whose money was that? Because the Lord said all the silver and gold was His. Well, I fixed her a good meal because I know how to cook. Well, where, where you get the food from? Well, I had some in my fridge. And where did you get that from? Because all of his, the food is God's too. The earth is the Lord. Y'all don't help me. And the fullness thereof, the world. 
they didn't dwell. Well, you know, I had I had this little dress I had for them, and I wanted them to have that little dress, and I gave it a hat, and they ain't said nothing. Well, what you gave God, you used you to give it. Amen. But I said, when you give it to fool, you lend to the Lord. Amen. You were really lending to the Lord, which means he going to pay you back. We say that, serving the Lord will pay off when? After a while. We want immediate gratification. God is saying, be faithful to me. Endure, last, go the course. The race ain't given to the swift, not to the strong, but the one that endureth to the end. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Stay in the race. Looking under Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Not only that, he said, brethren, Paul wrote to Rome, he said, my heart's desire and prayer to God is that Israel will be saved. Don't you know that's what we want folk to be saved? I want my family to be saved. I want our church members to be saved. I want my friends to be saved. I pray, Lord, every night, Lord, bless the saints of God. In the morning, I get up, I say, Lord, bless the saints of God. Bless your preachers. Bless your pastors. Some are working hard. Some are at church trying to carry on the church. Got so much going on in their life, in their personal life. Some are sick trying to pastor. Some have family members are turning against them because they're trying to do God's will. There are some saints that are trying to make it. Some elderly can't get here and there. There are some younger saints trying to press their way. And their family have ostracized them. But we must pray for the saints of God. Like somebody pray for us, we ought to pray for them. Lord, bless your saints. Lord, bless your faithful. Lord, encourage your faithful. We must pray for the saints of God. Not only that, but I love how he said, Lord, save your people. And then the Lord said, and, and he right there is no temptation that is common to man. That is not common. The Lord said, there ain't none that you go through that ain't common. But God is faithful. That's why I love folks telling me, I, I can't do it no more. God is faithful if you want to be made. God is faithful when you go through your temptations. A lot of folks talking about, I, I, you, y'all don't understand. I, I need a man. You need God. That's what you need. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You ought not be reaching for stuff. Amen. God made you without a man. Y'all going to help me preach? When you came out your mama's womb, you weren't hugging on no man. Well, I got to have a drink. You weren't drinking when you came out your mama's womb. Y'all going to talk to me today? Well, I got to have it. Well, you didn't have it when you was born. But God have set you free if you want to be free. Paul here is trying to desire the prayers of the saints. And then not only that, but God will rescue you. The Bible says this, that in that moment that you're tempted, God will make a way to escape. Yeah. He'll help you get out of that. Yeah. He's like your hero. Yeah. He's like your rescuer. When things are going on and you can't see your way, God is the way. All right. He's the truth and the life. When you're trying to figure out how to work out, God already done worked it out. Tell God, lead me through this temptation. Oh, don't think you're not going to be tempted in life. A lot of folks think that I'm old now and I'm settled. There's a devil your age waiting on you. But I'm on a cane now. There's some devils walking around here on a cane. And they practice walking on it every day just for you. There's some folks trying to do a strut at 90. Oh, they try to strut. And you be them broke up everything, but they be trying. The devil come in all ages, in all forms. If you like it with curly hair, he'll find you a curly hair devil. You want a bald head, God will give you. God knows the devil will find you a bald head man. And if you want a bald head woman, the devil will find you a bald head woman. Whatever you like, you have to watch Satan. He's always trying to tempt you. But what you must do is remain faithful to God. Too many saints are falling by the wayside. I see so many of slipping away from God. Like they have no desire to be saved. God had brought us so far. I just look at the church, how it's changing so much. I remember when I first got the Holy Ghost, I didn't want to kill a roach. I didn't want to kill an ant. I love the Lord so much. Amen. I walked over the ants. I said, I can't kill God's creature. Then, then the Lord kind of educated me a little bit. As I grew in the Lord, he said, now that's a roach. You're going to have to kill him. <laughs> he don't belong in the house. I didn't want to bother none of God's creatures. His love was so strong in my heart, I didn't want to pray no roach would rain. 
but I grew up in God. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. When I first got the Holy Ghost, everything I asked for, immediately God gave it to me. But as I grew in him, I asked him, God, can you give me this? And he looked like he wasn't saying nothing to me. It just looked like he wasn't paying me no attention. As I grew in God, God wanted me to be more developed, that he may not come when I want him, but he's always on time. But all I needed to do is remain faithful to God. Sometimes we ask God to heal us immediately. Sometimes God said, no, I want you to pray more. I need you on your knees more. I need you. You see, because if I do it too quick, you take me for granted. All right. I remember Paul. Paul was educated. Paul had been through so much. God had elevated him above measure. But he wrote in he writes to the saints. He said, there was given me a thorn in my flesh. My God. And then we, some people try to figure out, well, it must have been an eye infection. Oh, no, it's probably a sexual problem. No, he was drunk so much, his stomach, you couldn't figure it out because Paul didn't mention it. God wouldn't allow him to mention it. Because you're not going to tie God down on what's bothering you. Each one of us are given a thorn in our flesh. You may not acknowledge it, but each one of us got a cross to bear. You are not to run in front of it to try to greet it. You're not to run away from it trying to hide from it. But Jesus said it like this. If you will follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Which means God have already announced to you, children of God, that you have a cross that you must bear. Ain't no sense of you acting like you all right, all, I'm just fine. You have a cross standing right in front of you that you have to bear. You are a sacrifice on your cross, but take it up and follow God. Oh, but it's too heavy. This is too much for me to carry this cross. But Jesus is a burden bearer. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. The Bible said, casting all your cares on me, for I care for you. Ain't no cross God gave you that you can't bear. Oh, they always lying on me. Endure, God was lying on me. People are always talking about, they talked about Jesus. Some of those, didn't nobody even know who you were. Now you're a famous person because folks done talked and lied about you. You ought to be thankful. Didn't nobody even know what your middle name was. But now the folks talking about you, we know your first and your middle name. You ought to be happy. We know you now. My God, where you were nothing, now you're a child of God. And they know you're saved. Because you didn't curse. You didn't fight. You didn't get a knife or a gun. You kept your dignity. You kept your integrity. Being faithful to God. Not only that, but just, the Bible says there's a faithful thing saying that these things, I will that thou art affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Amen. These things are good and profitable unto men. You must maintain good works. Uh -huh. don't, don't use your age. Well, I ain't got no money. Don't use that. Ain't nobody help me. Don't use that. Maintain. Keep up your maintenance on your walk with God. Yeah. You, when it's out of order, fix it and get it running quick. Amen. Well, I'm so upset with it. Fix that. Don't let that just linger. Well, they know about fix that problem that you're talking about. Love yourself. If don't nobody love you, you love yourself. Well, I ain't nobody said nothing. You say something nice to yourself. My God, when folks say, Pastor, well, you done gained some weight. I got in the mirror and said, boy, you looking good today. Look at you. I showed sure did. My hair wasn't combed. I hadn't even brushed my teeth, but I look good morning. Woo, look at you. I practice smiling in the mirror when I wake up in the morning. The other look don't look good, but that smile sure bring my day. I said, let me fix my hair. <laughs> so I look good after this smile, but you sure look good, boy. I ain't bragging. I'm so happy. Don't let nobody talk about you shows is ugly. You ain't ugly. God ain't make no mistake. Everybody he made was beautiful in his sight. My God, with well, my hair's napping, you ain't got to worry about that. It's your hair. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody else got their hair straight. You wear yours like God gave it to you. Amen. Well, they got pretty skin. Yours is pretty too. God know how to fix you up. All right. Well, their nose is big, but look at yours. You can smell better. When sinus come, you ain't getting all stopped up. Tell the Lord, thank you. 
So you need to be faithful to God. And it said, oh, love, the Lord David said, all ye saints, the Lord preserves the faithful and plenteous reward the proud do. When you do right to God, God will bless you. Did y'all hear what I say? When you do right with God, God will preserve you. Amen. Yes, you will get sick at times, but God will be your healer. Yes, you will go without sometime, but God will always provide all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Don't look in your bank. I always say this. Stop looking at the money you have in your account. Ask God to let you look in his account. He said all the silver and the gold. Amen. You should not have to worry about nothing for the rest of your life. All your medicines are paid for for the rest of your life. All your bills are paid in advance for the rest of your life. Now, I ain't telling you to go spend all your money. But God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches. Well, how am I going to do with the gas? Oh, I put some gas in my car yesterday. It was almost $4. I said, but Lord, thank God for the money. Amen. Oh, we can complain about the gas. It ain't stopping the gambler from going to Wind Creek. Y'all ain't talking to me. All right. It ain't stopping Juju from sneaking over his girlfriend's house either. Yeah. Wife at the house, he put that gas in that car. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right. It didn't stop them folks from going to Mardi Gras. Did you hear anybody say, I can't go to Mardi Gras because I ain't got no gas? You ain't hear that, did you? No. no. <laughs> they go to the club, don't care what time, and, and they like to get there fashionably late. It started at 10, they got to get there at 12, but they got that gas, they fill up the car. If God take care of those that ain't doing right, he'll take care of you. God will take care of you. Be not dismayed. Whatever be time. God will. God will. God will, God will take care of you. Come on, be in faith. And when we see the Lord, oh my God, I want to see his face in peace. I want to be ready when the Lord calls. Yeah. Oh, I'm not down here playing church. I'm serious about what I'm doing. Yeah. When we see the Lord, we want to hear him say, Thou good yeah. and faithful, sir. Right. You've been faithful with little stuff. That's right. Now I'm going to make you rule over many. That's right. Come, faithful. Come and, and listen to what he said. Enter into the joy yeah. of the Lord. All right. Don't you want to hear the Lord say, well done? Yeah. Don't you want him to say, well done? You endure it, lied on, but well done. Come on. You took the abuse when you didn't have to, but you're coming on. Come on. Well done. You can come on in. The times you went to church when you wasn't feeling good and, 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 and then you press your way. Come on. Come on. Come on in. Well done. The times you didn't have clothes to wear like everybody else, but you wore what you had and you kept on doing it. Come, come on in. Well done, thou good and faithful service. The time you went to church and didn't have a dime in your pocket, but you'd rather just go to church and give God the praise. Come, come on in. Good and faithful servant. Oh, they were sounding better than you on the instruments. and you, They sang better than you, but you gave what you had. You, you didn't worry about trying to throw a note here, there, and everywhere. But you were faithful with the job that you were given. Come, come on in. Got good. And when you gave to the poor, you weren't worried about if they were poor or not. You just gave. Come on. Come on. Come on in. The Lord is saying, thy good and faithful servant, enter into the jaw of the Lord. Mother died. Your father died. But you kept coming to church. Right. You kept being faithful. Come on. Come on in. Oh, my God, you couldn't get a ride, but you found a ride. Why? Because I had to be in the house of God. Come on. I can hear the Lord saying, come on. Come on in. Right. Well, the many times that folk lied on you, you didn't feel your best, but they kept on pressuring you to give up, and you didn't give up. I can hear the Lord say, come on. Right. Come on in. Come on. Come on. You've been good. Not only one year, you've been sober for the rest of your life since I've saved you. Come on. I hear the Lord saying, come on. Thou good and faithful sir. Yeah. Don't you listen to what folk talking about. It's all right to do anything. When you endure your hurts as a good soldier, the Lord can say, come on. Yeah. Huh? All right. Yeah. 
you, you've been faithful over little stuff. Well, they got all that. You just come on. That's right. Them over there ain't going nowhere. You come on. See, y'all looking at folks speaking in tongues, and they know how to speak in tongues. Come on outside and see my Honda. Come on. Ooh, they so deep. Did you not hear what they said? They said, come outside and see their Honda. And you thought they were speaking in tongues. How roasting about you roasting something? You don't make up no tongue. God gives you a tongue. I want you to pray in the spirit every hour. You can pray in the spirit without speaking in tongue. How do you speak in tongue? You let God do that. Yes. Through the Holy Ghost. You don't make it up. You don't get it off a radio. You don't listen to nobody tell you how to do it. God will speak himself. He'll do it while you're brushing your teeth. He'll do it while you're washing dishes. You can be in your bed sleeping. God will wake you up speaking in tongue. You don't just have to be in front of a microphone at the church. And then you just getting all excited. Sometimes, I remember one time I was preaching at this church. And the elderly lady couldn't walk. And the preacher told me, you can go ahead and pray for the people. I said, ma'am, can you walk? She said, I can't walk. She's in a wheelchair. And she had an oxygen mask on. Her son was rolling her around. I said, ma'am, I'm not trying to be fresh. But I just want to anoint your knees with oil. She said, I asked, would you mind me? And she said, yes, go ahead. I anointed her knees with oil. I said, Lord, I want you to heal her. Let her walk again. And I left her alone. And the next man, he was about 50 years old. And he was standing up there. I don't know what was wrong with him. But as soon as I anointed him with God's oil and said, God, do whatever you need to do, he fell straight on his behind. I mean, from, from standing up to hitting his behind, I said, that ought to hurt. But if you're in God, God put angels on you to cushion you. There was a heaven set lady. She felt so ashamed of herself. I said, from now on, you will never feel ashamed of who you are. And I said, I want you to run around the church and hold your head up. She went to running. Next thing I turned around, the elder lady in the wheelchair. She got up and her son trying to chase her with the air thing. She got up out the wheelchair running. God healed them. I didn't do that. Don't you dare try to give me God's glory. That was the glory of God doing that according to their own faith. So the preacher called me the next day. He said, you know what would be good? When you, when you pray for folk and God is doing it, it'd be good like you speak in tongue. And I said, but God healed folk and he ain't never spoken tongue. The lady with the issue of blood, he ain't say nothing but who touched me. Right. Do y'all hear me? The man that was by the pool, we didn't hear him speaking tongue. He said, what do you want? He said, take up your bed. Y'all going to help me? I didn't hear him speaking tongue with them that had leprosy. He said, go show yourself to the priest. We always want to try to impress people. Impress them. Let me, let me speak in a little tongue. Why don't you just do what God say do? Sometimes all you need to do is just pray quietly. God can heal folk without your mouth running. Do y'all know that? We're supposed to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Not our hands. we placing God's hand there. Oh, when Pastor Cox touched me, I faint. Oh, you, I don't know what you do. You probably fainted when John kissed you too. <laughs> this is not an emotional thing when we come to God it's a spiritual thing and don't you know if you got God you can lay hands on yourself sometimes you may not be at church when you're sick but you speak to yourself and say God I believe in my healing and I re y'all ain't talking to me I receive it in the name of Jesus God can do it right on your jaw some folks that got sick while they was driving. And God healed them right in their drive. So I'm talking about being faithful to God. Mm -hmm. When you are faithful, God rewards that. So my recommendation to you today is be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. So when you hear God say, thou good and faithful sir, you've been faithful with little stuff. Now come on, be a rule over many. Enter into the joy. Oh, I, I got a gun. Ain't nobody going to disrespect me. Forget about your little feelings. You got bigger things to do with God. God want to use you in his service. You worry about being liked by people. Forget about Jesus wasn't liked by people. You look at him. You think he didn't have a good successful record. He had, he had 12 disciples. And half of them was halfway out the door. Peter wanted to fight. Judas betrayed him. Thomas didn't believe him. The James and John fighting over positions. Who's going to be the greatest in the king? He had a mess on his hand. Now y'all understand what Pastor Cox goes through. 
How many members you have? Thank God for everyone I got, but I ain't, I ain't trying to have to worry about a whole lot of folk. Let me get y'all to the kingdom. It's a lot of work trying to get one soul ready for the kingdom. Let's be ready when the Lord comes. Do y'all love the Lord? Look at somebody, tell them I love them. And I want to be faithful. If anything ought to be on your register this week, anything on your schedule that I want to be more faithful to God. I got to get on that job, be there on time. How about getting up in the morning praying to God? Lay there in the bed and just call on Jesus. Yeah. My Lord, before you go to bed tonight, how about taking an extra five minutes and be faithful to God in prayer? Take time and read the word of God. And then after you read it, rehearse it to yourself. Now, what did I just read? Because now you're building on your faithfulness. You cannot be faithful until you get some faith. And faith come by hearing and hearing by the why are we standing on our feet? Why are we standing on our feet? I want to be a follower of Christ. Oh, Lord. I want to be one of his disciples. I want in the newness of life. I want to be, I want to be. 